But I do want to say this arrived safe and sound. Oh, I you got it too? All right, good, it. good. I absolutely love it. It's gorgeous. Yeah. His work on the coins is phenomenal. Yeah. So, what, Danny, did you send her that? Uh, no, Ben. Uh, I, th- he gave me like ten to like do like a giveaway. Right, but you, but you, you get you did the giveaway to her. Yeah, I, I was one of the selected the people. Why, why don't you, why don't you give me one? You, got, you already got one. Stop it. You already got one. Stop it. What's going on, you guys? It's your huggable hipster here, and welcome back to the Casual Nerd. Today, I have the a lovely family here. That's just what I'm gonna call you guys because it's, it's true, you know. But I have a select topics over here. I don't know why I said like a librarian, but I have a select topics here that we're going to discuss and we're going to ponder over because that's what we do as gamers. Um, We're going to talk about Xbox. We're going to talk about PC gaming. We're going to talk about different topics. And one thing that I added new into this podcast is where we're going to talk about things that we enjoy. I've been seeing Paris actually talk about a lot of the X-Men stuff lately, and it's given me the inspiration to go into more of like, okay, we're going to talk about, let's talk about food, let's talk about comics, let's talk about anime, let's talk about all the other stuff that we enjoy besides gaming. So to start it off, let's go into some Xbox, because we saw the showcase, we've been seeing a lot that has been happening, and I want to know how you guys feel after the showcase, after all that we've seen so far. I feel good. You know, I think the year... Mm-hmm. That's the year shock. started. I mean, come on. Anyway, already, already. The year. Already. See, guys, look, I don't look for trouble. I just come here to talk games. You know? <laughs> no, but uh, honestly, I think because of the, the past couple months, you know, seeing the, the news about layoffs, like it was just almost every week news er, er, all the time of people losing their jobs. That thing was very, very stressful seeing that. And going to Summer Game Fest, it's like, not only Summer Game Fest, but all the events that was happening around the area here in Los Angeles. Um, you know, companies like Ubisoft and Xbox having their own thing too. It felt really good, honestly, because now it's like a celebration of people that have been working so, so, for so long, working on these projects behind the scenes. Some of them are still working there, some of them are not. You know, but it's good to celebrate and see the, the stuff that everybody's been working on. You know, from, from indies to like the big, big studios. You know, so especially this event there was a lot a lot of really cool indie games and like the way how now publishers are helping people that j- they just started working on their studio and uh and you know like for example the blumhouse games like i love i love horror games right so the things that they're doing that's really cool and now they could take a risk let let the creators do their own thing and do all different types of, of horror games from like, you know, first person, third person, even the the cozy, you know, uh, like the Star Stardew Valley type vibe, you know, that was really cool to see. And and also, especially with Xbox too, like that company was going through a lot the the past couple months, and especially with the you know rumors and leaks and all, all that stuff, and plus the layoffs. Seeing that pres- that presentation was really cool to see that, and and I, you could tell like a lot of people were very nervous behind the scenes. They didn't know it was gonna be like a big hit. Some people were like, they were like excited for us to see their reaction, but there was a lot that I talked to at Summer Game Fest and also at at the event that they were nervous. Like, yo, we don't know what's gonna happen. We'll see, you know. So, um, I hope we could continue to show these games and support as much as we can. And and now to the next event, Gamescom. I think that's going to be a big thing too. So it's a great summer so far. Yeah, I think so. What about, what about you guys? I would just like to point out that you asked Danny about Xbox, and he started talking about Summer Game Fest stuff too. Stay on topic, <laughs> Danny, please. Hey, but it's all it's it's, yeah, all, it's the, all the same, uh, you know. It's, it's, it's conglomerate. Yes. Thank you, thank you, I, thank I'm you. I'm going to show you how you can separate topics. Okay. Yes. Oh, so. Okay. <laughs> Man. Should I like, Paris, man. As, a, as a side note? As a side note, should I keep like a yeah. little ticker on the side in post production of how many you times notice, you guys go? Out? You notice it's two <laughs> and one. All right, uh, two is zero. I haven't done anything. I'm just talking from my heart about hey, the gaming industry, and this I'm guy's just, looking for trouble. I'm just <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm just I'm just pointing stuff out. That's all I'm doing. You know, I, I, I'm listening to what our host is asking us. And yeah, I want to respond to that. And you're going I off on tangents and the other stuff. That's no, a, no, that's no. Here's, a, here's, a, here's the thing. I know that she mentioned she asked about Xbox, the, the showcase. Right. But I think it was important to mention about just the industry overall. You know, like um, I think it was important to mention it. That's all. Super Nintendo Switch. What? 
Oh, oh, I was about to say that too. And you know I'm right. Super <laughs> Nintendo Switch. That's what they're going to call it. It just makes sense. I'm just telling you that now. But as far as Xbox goes, yeah, I know. I mean, you know, Dan, Daniel's spot on. I mean, they they needed it. What what I was saying before the showcase was this was their opportu- first opportunity this entire year to actually control the message. Everything again with the layoffs and, you know, all the, all the rumor and speculation and things that we've seen since the beginning of this year. This was their first opportunity to say, hey, this is Xbox. This is our roadmap for the next 24 months. This is what you can expect from us. And I think they delivered in that aspect. If if anything, this was probably the best showcase they've ever put on Tony yeah. and um, <laughs> the, the games, the presentation, everything they showed. I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I would say out of every game that they showed, there were maybe two or three that weren't for me, weren't like something that I didn't anticipate that I didn't want to play. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. fantastic showcase, a lot of highly anticipated games. Um, I think they drove home the message that game pass is here to stay they drove home the message you know bethesda games activision games are not a part of, now a part of xbox game studios it did what they had to do i mean people can have their opinions about what's going to be multi-platform and all of that but at the end of the day if you like xbox if you like xbox games i think they're delivering a great lineup here over the next couple of years and also something i just want to say before we get to you because i don't want to uh, lose this thought um mm-hmm. People need to realize also that the games that they showed, they showed a melange of different things. That's what I love about these showcases, because not everything is going to be for every person. They showed some kids stuff. They showed Mm -hmm. things for people who are in their early 20s, people who are just trying to find their identity through gaming. They showed a lot of really cool variants. And I feel like so many people are who were like, oh, you know, this show sucks or they, you know, zero out of 10, like all this kind of thing. They're not remembering that a lot of the stuff that they're showing is for every age group. It's not just one age group. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, um, I'm going to go. I'm going to be the opposite, man. I, but hey, Danny, I know you wanted to say something. So you raise your hand. No, I was going to ask you, wait, you didn't like the Xbox press conference? Oh, you didn't hear about this? Yeah, no, oh, no you, you, you didn't see. I got a lot of heat for that. Oh, man. You know, I, like, I, yeah. yeah. So Cody, I'm going to be. Yeah. Before, before you say anything, and mm-hmm. I'm going to keep it real with you. I've been going to their press conferences since 05. I have never seen Xbox doing a presentation like this ever. Ever, I think there has been close, maybe 2007, right? By right, Paris, like 2007, eight mm-hmm. around there, little things like that, right? But they have, I've never, okay, this is not no that moment from PlayStation, you know, in 2013, which the games were whatever, it was more of the moment, right? This was the games overall presentation. The games were like for every person that if they're into different type of genres and the way how the communication of, the hosting, the having, you know, Phil and the intro and all that stuff. Like, I felt like it was good. It was really, really good. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts why you think it was not a, a great presentation. Yeah. So I'm going to divide it into two things. And, and Danny, I, since you didn't know, I tweet out my thoughts on it and I got destroyed by, by the Xbox community, which is normal for me. I've been, the, the Xbox community has hated me for over a decade. I'm perfectly comfortable with that hate, right? Um, so I'm going to divide into two things. As a show, it was very well put together, good flow and everything. It kept things going, no low points. But what did I see? A lot of games coming in a vague 2025. We don't know when. We've had Xbox give us the roadmap before, only to not get a lot of these games. A lot of the trailers that we saw, even the good ones, a lot of either in-game or CG stuff. And I've reached the point where I'm like, show me the gameplay. I, I'm not trying to see this stuff. And yes, I am speaking as this as someone who just watched it from home. I, I may have had a different experience if I was actually there with feeling the energy off of people and everything. But like, I was, I, I was not impressed by that. And on a personal tip, and, and I'm keeping it real right now. After that Dragon Age trailer, I didn't care about the rest of the show. That thing was so terrible; it ruined the entire thing for me. You know, and then they came, they came back and they, they showed like better footage. Um, so, yeah, like, again, as objectively, it was a good show for Xbox. And I do like the fact that it gave people hope. But for me personally, Tony Polanco, I was not impressed. Uh, and, and you know, being serious for a second, because yeah. I, I saw the 
the grief you were getting online when, when that happened. But, you know, you've always stuck by your opinion because it's yeah. your opinion. I think that's what people need to understand with this, these things. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean doesn't invalidate someone else that loves yes, it. Right. Exactly. And you, gave, and you just broke down your reasons why. And I can't dispute anything that, that you said for your reasons for disliking it, because, yeah, they were a little vague on on release dates with, with a lot of those games. I would counter from a gameplay standpoint. I think the games that actually needed to show gameplay, we saw it. South of Midnight, Perfect Dark, things like that. They actually showed you in-game footage of how it would work. I would have liked State of Decay 3 to have shown gameplay. As, as an example, we saw a little bit more Fable, things like that. But I, I'm with you as far as the Dragon Age thing go. Like, I don't know what they were thinking at EA or Bioware for that to be the the game, the game the reveal because when Danny and I got to see it at Summer Game Fest, like the 45-minute demo, oh, way better. Like, yeah. into, like oh my God, I want to play this in October when it comes out was how yeah. good. Paris, not to cut looked. you off, I saw that trailer at the office and I was like yeah. in the back room testing stuff and I literally yelled, why didn't they show this? Well, here's the thing. Here's <laughs> you know? the thing. Here's the thing, because um, yeah, we got to see the the, the game behind yeah. closed doors. Honestly, that was my game of the show for just of that summer game fest. Though, um, that was that's the marketing team that actually yeah. decided to release that yeah. and put it on the Xbox show. The PR team are the ones that did the the actual the like demo. Behind, mm-hmm. the demo behind closed doors and, the, and all that stuff. So, hey man, I, I feel like. They made a mistake releasing that that trailer. That trailer to me was like boring as hell. Very, very boring. Yeah, very tone deaf too. Like it they, they yeah. felt like a like a looter shooter type of deal when it's not that. Um, but yeah. I do want to say something positive. And even though this didn't have any gameplay whatsoever, mm-hmm. when they had that new gear, son, I was yes. done. I was man, like, man, let's man, go. That's all you needed. E day. Oh, yeah. E day. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. giving because I'm I'm being honest. I don't care for the characters from Gears of War four or five. Don't care for them. I want the old guys. I want Marcus. I want Dom. I want those guys. So when I saw that trailer, bro, and I saw yeah. young Marcus Phoenix and then Dom, I was like, okay, that's yeah. dope. But no release date whatsoever, <laughs> which is like, oh. Well, it was like, here, you, you, you have yeah. to realistically think holiday 2026. I, yeah. It's a 20 yeah. year anniversary. It just lines up, makes a lot that, of that's sense. That's what I think yeah. so too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and another thing too, Tony, like I know Gamescom is coming up right now. And this is supposedly going to be Xbox's biggest booth ever because Paris has been to Gamescom. So I don't know how, how the difference, like how big is these booths compared to like their E3 stuff. Um, what happened if they start showing dates at this yeah. event of, of uh, some of those games that you're saying that there was? No I'm date, glad, you know? Yeah, and I'm glad you bring that up because that was another problem I had. A lot of these things were wait till Gamescom, wait till Gamescom, wait till Gamescom. So my mind is still not going to be changed on this specific thing. It's like, mm-hmm. wait, that's actually to make things make things worse. I'm like, wait, you're making us wait for Gamescom to give us dates. Why didn't you do this at this presentation? So I, it, I it, yeah, so it, I, it, I, it, I, for I me personally, it may it may like it'll probably upset me more to be honest. But that's me. Why. I know why. So tell us, why? tell us, Mister. I know why. On the edge of my seat. <laughs> because hey. they 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 weren't a hundred percent confident in putting a date on it in June. They need more time. And yeah, it's that yeah. simple. Yeah. And we're we're in an age now where and because you said it earlier, Tony. Remember when Xbox a couple of years ago did the whole twelve? These are the mm-hmm. games you're getting in the next twelve months, and it backfired on them. I think yeah. play it safe. Let. People are going to be so excited to see what the what these games look like that let's not lock down a Vowed or Indiana Jones just yet because those teams might need a little more time to be confident in hitting that release date, right? Not to mention, they have so many things coming in the back half of 2024. And Matt Booty just talked about that, and I think it was Variety or whatever he was who he was talking to. They got to logistically figure that out. You can't just throw everything all at once. Or you're going to cannibalize yourself. You you have to strategically have certain release windows for these games so it makes sense, right? Like, as an example, you can probably release Avowed and Flight Sim 2024 around the same time because those are two completely different genres. Yeah. So those are two different audiences, right? But you don't want to put Avowed... Or, or I shouldn't even say a vow. You, you don't want to put Aria History Untold the same with Age of Mythology. Those are the same damn game, right? Yeah. So you're going to yeah. cannibalize yourself. You don't want to put 
shooter games like Call of Duty and then another shooter out at the same time either, right? So you you got to be smart and strategic about it. So I think that has something to do with it. But I, I get you on that critique because I think that's probably the biggest critique to come out of this showcase was being more firm on, on release dates or windows for these yeah, games. Yeah, for sure. Um, and Paris, to your point, if you saw some of my replies to people, I told them, hey, I'm glad you enjoyed the show. Because, again, I'm not trying to take away anything away from everybody, but it kind of doesn't work the other way around. People don't want to give me that grace that I give them. <laughs> you know how it works, well, you know? Well, I, I'm, I'm not trying to rant yeah. here, but, you know, this is why I'm in my villain arc now, because hey. this, is, this is the this is what social media has become. You're, unless you have a popular opinion, then everybody wants to jump on you and ridicule you and say the most ridiculous things to you online. Again, I appreciate that you can have the opinion that you have because it makes me look at my own opinion and go, well, damn, am I overestimating it? Why does it, why is he, why is he lower on it than I am? You know what I mean? That's good. You yes. want to have differing opinions. You can be adults and, and, and talk these things out. Like we're literally talking about it right now versus, you know, the toxic nature that we see online. Yeah. No, you're hundred percent right about that. Yeah. And all point, great points all around. I really appreciate the input because honestly, it's really crucial to see differing opinions, especially, especially on a toxic website like Twitter, because when you see differing opinions amongst individuals who can reasonably hash out things without the name calling, without, you know, the bantering in a negative way. I feel like that shows an example to others who can hopefully do the same thing. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. holding out hope for many people, but hopefully it could happen, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when it, when we, uh, let's go into one of the next topics of what you guys are looking forward to, because I saw so many games at this showcase that looked absolutely stunning. I'm the most excited for South of Midnight. Can we just talk about how beautiful that game is? That game looks that game looks phenomenal. And oh my god! I can't wait to try that out. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, and I think Paris will not mention this to me. He 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 said it perfectly too. That this game remind him of like uh, True Blood, that TV show, right? And I told Lafayette. him, like, you know what? We gotta we gotta Lafayette add a little bit of True Blood. Yeah, yeah. You also gotta add in there. Inf the infamous game too like it has that type of yeah vibe. i see what you're talking about yeah yeah it looks phenomenal it looks really really good and i'm glad that we get to see that that type of game out there too you know show how it is like living in, in louisiana like down south and all that stuff you know it's, it's cool yeah it's the that southern black mythology is what they're going for and mm -hmm. and i really appreciate it and and i love it not to mention the art style in the game the music was really good in the game um Obviously, even the voice cast that that we've already heard in there, they were phenomenal. Um, it's like that was it's probably a tie between that and Perfect Dark for me as far as happy surprises. Um, but for that game to show the way that it did um, in that showcase, I mean, definitely highly anticipated for when it comes out next year in 2025. Yeah. And, more, and more importantly, a new IP. Yes. yes. Thank God. Oh. It's so exciting, too, because the voice acting and the way that the dialogue was done in the trailer, it brought such a huge smile to my face because mm -hmm. very seldom do we see a lot of games now that just are not apologetic, have character mm -hmm. and do things because they want to do it. And in such a I don't want, I just was a charismatic way because it was it used to be like 10 years ago when The Evil Within came out, that you had these really intriguing, psychologically driven characters that just had their own narrative, that they did stuff off the cuff. And I feel like that's going to be a lot of this game. And I'm, I'm just, uh, that and Diablo's expansion, I'm so excited for. Yeah, that's going to be good, too. It's going to be good. You know, another game I, I think uh, I can't wait to ch check out, of course, is, is Gears, of course. That's going to be, like, the big thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to know. I want to learn more about about Perfect Dark, um, more about the story, when this game is coming out, what type of engine they're using too, because it, it looks uh, it looks really really good. You know, especially yeah. for like the past couple of years, we've been hearing you know stuff that's happening at the studio, people are going in and leaving and all that stuff. And I'm like, damn, are we ever gonna see any type of gameplay footage? And I was very surprised with that what they showed. 
Yeah. The one that I was so surprised that I didn't see at the showcase was the second game for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, because that has been in development hell for the past few years. And the fact that like, oh, yeah, no, you're saying it's coming out this year in the fall. How? Like it doesn't we don't see a trailer. We haven't heard a pee pee. Peep, that I, came out wrong. We heard a peep. Hold up. <laughs> Let me tell you. I have a game that um, I was very shocked that we didn't get its debut. Probably because they kind of hinted that we were and then nothing. This next Bioshock. 2K. Oh, 2K right. hinted there was going to be something at Summer Game Fest from a well-known IP or whatever they said, right? I instantly thought Bioshock. There's been rumblings the past couple of years. Bioshock, we know what's being worked on. Mm-hmm. Nothing. We didn't see anything, not even a peep about that. And another 2K game, Judas from Ken Levine. I mean, he did a small preview, you know, with, with some, some, you know, limited preview with a couple creators. And I figured, well, Summer Game Fest, we're going to see it again. Plus, he also showed it at, at um, the Game Awards uh, last year as well. So I thought, all right, we're going to see more Judas. Nothing. So mm-hmm. those would probably be probably my two big surprises of not seeing anything. Hmm. Yeah, what about you, Tony? Were you surprised that there weren't any ones in particular? No. Um, so are we talking about games shown at Summer Game Fest specifically? Because there is one game that I may hijack this podcast for. Like I want to talk about like that was announced last week. Like if you guys thought I was too negative before, you're going to see Tony in ultra happy mode when I talk about this game. Um, but speaking about specific um, Summer Game Fest, the game that set up for me, this one I, I've been waiting for, um, Monster Hunter Wilds. Oh. I love Monster Hunter World, man. Uh, like me, okay, you understand. This is a game me and my boys, we streamed this like every weekend for like half a year. It was so much fun. I love the expansion. And I cannot wait to get back into that world. This one looks even crazy. And ever, you know, I had some some of my friends that went over to the, um, you know, that saw the the presentation, and they were okay. Just go back. So they showed us Monster Hunter World when I was at E3, right? And it was a, a, a you know hands off presentation, and that sold me. And I had a friend tell me the same story, <laughs> but from Wild, like, yo, this is legit. You have the monsters fight each other. You have all these things. So good, so good. Mm-hmm. So that's probably the the most anticipated thing. Um, but if I can get away from Summer game for us for a little bit because to me the biggest announcement of the year happened last year and it comes with a story. So if you, I hope you'll indulge me for this one, right? <laughs> last last okay. week I'm I'm in the office chilling, right, talking to one of my colleagues who sits across from me. We just you know regular chat, whatever. Yeah. I just got in, right? Nintendo Direct was happening, but I'm not really watching it. And I see an email coming from Capcom. Headline says, and I saw reading the headline, Marvel's Capcom. I stopped reading it. And I looked at my boy and I'm like, and this is what I told him. I'm like, dude, for almost 20 years, I've been waiting for Capcom to put X-Men, X-Men Trill the Atom, Marvel Superheroes, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter, Marvel's Capcom, Marvel's Capcom to one collection. I'm like, if this email says what I think it does, I'm going to lose my mind. I read the rest of the email. All those games I just listed were there and the Punisher. I went to the bathroom and I screamed. Like you, like you gotta understand something. Like these games were by teenage years, man. On the Sega Saturn, not only on Sega Saturn, but in, in bodegas, arcades, and stuff. Like playing these X Men games, Street Fighter. Because you gotta understand, in the nineties, my two loves were Street Fighter and X Men. So you like you had both of these together, man. Like the, the memories, me and my boys were going nuts over this announcement. I was getting texts and every like as soon as I got announced, like yo, Tony, you saw it, you saw it, you saw it. I, I haven't been this happy about anything in years. You know, like this is the opposite of what happened. Uh, you know, like when I saw a Dragon Age, I got really, really upset. This is the opposite of that. It was like, yo, I, I lost it. And I love the fact that when I went on Twitter, everybody else was hyped too. I hadn't realized that this game was so beloved, not just by me, because remember they re-released this game on Xbox 360 back in the day. And I forgot, I'm like, oh yeah, a bunch of younger people got to play the game and now they want it back too. You know, so I'm so happy. And this is going to be done in the same collect- in the same vein as the other collections Capcom has done. So we're going to get like all the good stuff, rollback, net code, character galleries, music. I'm done. I'm done. I like, I, I like, this is what I want. This is what I want to happen. I was talking to my friend Jeffrey Wilson about this because Evo is <laughs> coming. Evo is coming in, in August, right? Mm-hmm. If we get an announcement, because we don't, we just got 2024. We don't know when this game's dropping. I think they're going to announce a release date. 
for uh, during Evo announce it, right? And as a bonus, because there's another announcement that could happen that would get me almost as hyped as this. He, almost on the same level. Um, Harada, he is the guy who does Tekken, right? He said in an interview last year, I don't know why no one reported on this. I looked at it. It's, it's real. He said it. He goes, I, we can't release Tekken um, 8 at this time because I got to wait for this Virtua Fighter uh, announcement to happen. Bro, if at Evo, you get Marvel's Capcom and Virtua Fighter 6 announced, you're going to, no, you guys, are, D- Danny, you, Danny, Paris, no, you guys are over there in California. You're going to hear me screaming, bro. I'm going to be louder than a hip hop gamer. I'm telling you, man. It's going to be wild. <laughs> And you it's know, been so, a while. Yeah. It's been a while, especially a virtual fighter game. It's been yeah. years, man. Yep. It's yeah. been years. I do I do have a little story to tell you, uh, Tony. Yeah. Um, so when I was at Summer Game Fest, I went to check out uh, Monster Hunter Wilds. And the presentation was amazing, right? So when I go inside, you know, I see Phil, Jeff Keighley, like the whole Xbox team, a lot of creators and media, everybody in the, in the room just waiting for the presentation. So we got to see it. I'm like, wow, this looks beautiful, right? Poof, the the presentation, the demo got messed up. So they had to restart it. All right, let's restart it. Yo, it happened three times, yo. Wow. <laughs> and it's not their fault. It, it happens. Yeah, it, it happens, happens. It happens. It happens. Yo, Phil and the team, they, they like they had they got up and like they went to another <laughs> another game at the poof. But it was just like, damn, it was like, bro, man, what the heck? Wow. But uh no, but everybody, we, we left, honestly, we left the presentation clapping, like, yo, this game looks sick, like, because they showed us that stuff that they never showed to the to, to the public yet, because we, we went through that so many times, they were like, let's show them something different. So it was really cool, really, really cool uh, seeing that. And I think what they showed was, like, a different weapon or something like that, so it wasn't, like, the greatest thing, man. But, yeah, I, I can't wait, I can't wait to play this, man. Um, the game looks phenomenal, man. It looks very different than than uh, Monster Hunter Worlds. Yeah, very different. I, I can't very, very different. Yeah, because yeah, the Monster Hunter Rise was more back to back to basics of Monster Hunter, like the old 3DS games. I never cared for those. Fran- this was a franchise I've always wanted to get into, but like, you know, it was always on systems. I didn't really care about 3DS and stuff. Graphics weren't there. And I love how World is like, you could spend half an hour just on a hunt, just trying to find the monster. And then you get to the yeah. actual like fight itself. And obviously I'm a kaiju guy. You know, I, I love that stuff. So... Um, it's fast too it plays fast so yes that's good yeah. um but yeah those are my big highlights uh Mar- monster hunter wilds and uh marvel's capcom i can't believe i'm saying that man we're finally getting it marvel's capcom fighting collection give me it yeah and for those for those who are watching listening um i know those games was hard to find and if you find the physical it was so expensive so expensive. Oh, I'm like, Danny, Danny, guess what? I got all what? the. I still got them all physical. I still oh, own them. You know, I still, yeah. I still own all of them. And wow. and remember, two of them, X Men Street Fighter and Marvel Superheroes. That those are Japanese imports on Sega Saturn. Yeah. Yeah. I still got yeah. them. I still got them. That's wild. <laughs> I I do have to go on a tangent, and I'm going to keep this in the podcast because I need people to understand something. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about games. I'm going to probably be sentimental right now so bear with me for a moment Mm -hmm. hearing you two and hearing all of you guys talk about your love of gaming for as long as you guys have been alive it's so inspiring i'm not gonna get emotional this is not gonna happen no Mm -hmm. not no 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 um it's really amazing because it's very inspirational for someone like myself who's in this industry wow no not gonna do the cry oh my god um Mm -hmm. So thank you guys, literally all the stuff that you do. Thank you, because <laughs> just hearing you guys talk about it, it's so it's really great. That's what it's awesome. about, yeah, that's this what it's is, about. I, this I, is all I about think man. people that gets lost in translation a lot, especially over these past few years, is and and I'm going to speak for all of us when I say this. We do this because we love it. Like like I love this. I I love. This is why I've a, a dinosaur and I keep going and, and want to because I, 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 I love being able to talk about games, obviously play games and have these kind of discussions. And then like we're all just at Summer Game Fest and just the, the in-person stuff that, that we get to do and have those conversations. That's what motivates me. That's what pushes me forward. Wanting to do it. Will all my opinions be popular? No, but it's the fact that 
we're able to have this platform to be able to have these discussions and to go to back and forth and see different points of view and share these experiences and all that. Like, like I'll just say a personal story for me, like you've mentioned right before we start recording, like my son just graduated high school, he's 18 and something in him and I have shared over the past decade has been destiny. Whereas he started playing when he was nine years old, where he used to sit in, in his very room and watch me play. And I one day handed him the controller and let him play on one of my alt characters just so he could mess around and do stuff. And then I noticed he started getting really good at it and went bought him a PlayStation. Next thing I know, a year later, we're playing together and we're doing strikes and raids. He's joined the damn clan I'm in. He's carrying me in PvP, like all this stuff. And this has been something just like I said, through the years. And here Destiny's at, at right at its 10 year mark end. And he's basically been there for, for the whole time. I found a video from 2017 where we were just doing PVP doubles together. And I'm, I'm, I'm watching it and I'm talking. And I, t- <laughs> and I tell you, the moment he started speaking, it was like a time machine. It was like this little innocent boy on there and just the stuff and I put the video online people probably can find on social media but he's calling out stuff and he just has his innocence to him and all that and it's like that that stuff's priceless you you can't there's nothing that can replace that for me that's why you do this this is why we do this it's moments like that that you just will you will cherish your whole life you know and it's a moment in time that I was lucky enough to capture and I can look back even 10, 20 years from now. He can look back at it when he's a dad with his own kids and like, here's something me and my dad used to do together when we play games, you know, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I know I'm getting all rambly and sentimental on it too, but I, I, I feel you on that. And like Danny, you, you're about to go on that, that, that same, same thing too, you know, with, with your daughter. And as she gets older and she starts playing games and y'all have those moments together and, yeah, dude, it's priceless. You can't, you can't replace it. You know what? Uh, especially you, you you saying that um, last night. I was just on my phone um, late night. It was like maybe 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, and I was looking at the old videos from like around November and seeing how much she has changed already. And that, that was just a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Yo, I got so emotional, Paris. So oh, I, I, yeah. can imagine, I can imagine you <laughs> hearing hearing your son talking and it's like sound is so different how he is this, now you know this is way off topic but when you were texting me yesterday about the winery thing and then it sparked the memory i was like oh wait we have been there because we took family photos that photo is literally on the other side of this wall right now so mm-hmm. i was looking at it last night and it's just like where, where did the time go that feels like it was just yeah. yesterday and they're all just Little, little babies, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now they all grown and mm-hmm. bleed me dry. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But, oh man, it's, it's just stuff like that, that I think people, we, we should all take a moment to, to mm-hmm. reflect on and, and appreciate because it's, I'm t- like you said, you already would, with your daughter, it's just, it's like that. Dude. Yeah. You go so I, fast. I'll, I'll mention this. And I, th- it also relates to the conversation we're having. You know, this is why we should stop engaging and promoting the nonsense that we get to see online because mm-hmm. honestly man that that's that to me is a total waste of time when people are just angry about everything right and look at us we're talking about our experience with uh, attending events like summer game facts xbox game showcase the stuff we got to see online from home like it's an exciting time to just enjoy enjoy gaming you know I remember growing up living in New York City, you know, my neighbor, he had a, a you know, a Sega Genesis. I had a, a Super Nintendo. We were trade games and trade consoles because we just love games. It wasn't like, you know, attacking each other every time we see we go outside because he has a different uh, different system than me. You know, it was about like, you know, let's play together. Let's let's trade. So you can experience what I experience. It's, it's like that's the thing that we should be talking more about of that instead of creating content, especially the creators, it's creating content that's like clickbait. Let, let me get people angry because that's going to help me to get more money on my videos. 
that's that's the part that's just annoying and uh and look every time i see someone at an event that i know they do that i straight up tell them to their face like this is not good for our industry it's not good for the things that we're doing look us we've been doing it for a long time and we have never done that in a way where we just want to get people angry like and get and, and just take advantage and get money out of that like we're not about that you know we're gonna have different opinions that's different having different opinions is different but grifting and that type of vibe all the time like it's not it's not helpful like how's that gonna help our industry to it's grow not, it's not gonna help at all i will say this people that know know there was mm -hmm. an incident that uh, i was involved in uh, a couple weeks ago, obviously around Summer Game Fest time. It was right before Summer Game Fest, matter of fact. It was fascinating how many people came up to me during Summer Game Fest in person to thank me for being vocal about that, about what Danny's talking about. It is such a stain on everything that we do where, like I said, I just, lo I just love this. I just love to talk about game. You ain't got to agree with me. I say dumb stuff all the time, but I'm not maliciously saying something dumb. I'm just giving you my opinion. But when people do things that they're purposely just trying to rile people up, they're purposely saying things that they admit they don't believe themselves because it creates engagement. I say it all the time. Negativity is easy. That's easy work for engagement. Super easy. Actually having an intelligent, positive conversation about gaming, even if it's not positive, but just having an intelligent conversation about the current state of the industry or gaming or what you like or what you don't like is hard. It takes work. It takes preparation. It takes actually putting together a coherent thought about what you're doing, because the one thing that I will always take pride in. If I tell you I like something, I'm going to tell you why. If I tell you I don't like something, I'm going to tell you why. You will understand my, just like you did earlier, Tony, I'm going to break down my reasonings on why I have said opinion. Don't mean you have to like it, but you know why. And I think that's important in what we do, what, what content creation is. You know, give your audience something well thought out versus Xbox sucks and is Game Pass doomed with your stupid thumbnail emojis and all, all that other stuff that we see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the, the YouTube I, I, look, thumbnail look, face. I, look, I'm, I'm old, I guess, and I just simply don't care anymore, but to me, that is such lazy work to do. It's lazy. It's easy. It takes no effort to do. And look, people that know, know. But I take pride in what I do. I take pride in the fact that, and, and I was not, and, and Danny's been a huge help for you know, being serious, him and I obviously joke around a lot. I am not doing any of this without Danny. None of it. Because he has always been such a help to me and an inspiration to me and a motivator to me over the years that even in recent times, I've always been very shy about accepting my accepting praise or whatever the case you may relate, or just knowing that, hey, I'm actually good at this. And I'm, I've always been very hesitant and shy to say that because I don't like thinking that way. But even this last summer game fest, it was crazy how many people kept telling me, hey, I appreciate the work that you do. I love what you do. Developers coming around like, oh, man, I can't wait you to play my game. I need to know what you think about this, like all that stuff. It's like I, I, I take that personal that that really motivates me to want to keep doing this, that lets me know that when I am having self-doubt or I am second guessing myself, it's like, no, I actually am doing something right here. And, you know, I, I appreciate hearing stuff like that. So then when I see the opposite of it, when I see people taking the shortcut, when I see people doing it the easy way, I, I don't appreciate that. And look, when you involve me in your nonsense, I'm going to say something because keep, leave me, my whole thing is to leave me out of it. If, you, if that's your grift, if that's what you do, do it without me. Don't involve me. But when you involve me, I'm going to say something. And obviously people know that. No, but yeah, I, 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 I wish we were in a state right now, the way social media works, the way YouTube is working, the content creation game. 
it's easier to be negative than it is to be positive about stuff. That's what generates the clicks. That's what generates the money. At the end of the day, unfortunately, that's what it's all about. Sorry, yeah. I ranted. No, no, you're good. And, and I, I need to jump on it because it's everything you said w w was great. And I want to add to this. And it's something I was just thinking about now as we're talking about this, because you have a lot of these guys that they're doing all this stuff because they know it's going to get the quick hits, right? Yeah. But are they thinking, and I, the answer is no, they're not thinking about, are you going to be proud of this when you're done? Are you going to look back not. at your career and be like, oh, wow, I, what I did was a good thing. And I'm going to, and just to get a little personal right now, I, I haven't really talked about this. I only really talked about this on my podcast. Uh, recently, my mom passed away, right? And, you know, I've been thinking about, you know, my life lately and stuff. And she told me, she's very proud of me, right? And then I thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? I'm proud of me too. You know, I can look back at my career and be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm not perfect, obviously, but I, I'm happy with what I've done. When I eventually get to the point where I retire, I'm like, you know what? I left a good legacy. I, and I know this for a fact because just like you guys, I'm being invited to places. I get developers, manufacturers come up to me. Hey, Tony, we, we like what you said. Even if it's a negative review. Oh, OK. We saw what you, what you said. How, what can we do to fix this? People value what I have to say, right? These guys are not going to be able to say the same thing. They can't, they can't say it now. They sure as hell are not going to be able to say it to their kid. Are you going to be saying that to the kids? Oh, I'm proud that I started all this hate on Twitter. No, they're not. Like, you know what you're doing is wrong. And that's what makes it, like, really, really bad. They know what they're doing is wrong. Just like that one guy, we're not going to name names, who told you, oh, yeah, it's just a grip. This is how I get engagement. How corny is that, man? Like, and, and the sad thing is people know this. Some I know some of his fans have to know this. And they go along with it anyway because they like the drama. They like the nonsense. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it, again, it, it, it's yeah, the drama. It, like you yeah, said, yeah. they just want they just want the drama and the chaos that it creates. Yeah. So you you can't help. Okay, there's so people are always going to like drama. That's what sells, right? But like you said, you don't need to feed into that. You really don't. You know, you can give your opinion, and if it's spicy, it's spicy. But you're not doing it because you're like, Haha, how much money can I make today? I know what the things that Paris was saying, and also what Tony was saying about not taking shortcuts, like taking your time and all that stuff. Like, like Tony's been doing this for a long time, being a writer. I remember when he started back then. Uh, I forgot the website, but he, you know, I, that's how I met him at E3. Torrent, man. You know, Torrent, yeah. But now. I think it was last year, you know, I remember just watching the Apple press conference and you see Tim Cook that said, well, Tony Polanco, this and that, like an article that he wrote. And imagine, think about that, Tony, the, how you started and that moment, you know, we all going to have those moments. It's going to take some time. And that's why I tell people like, why take those shortcuts? I think of it as like a relationship. You start fast, it's going to end fast. Take your time. You know, things are going to be okay. Things are going to come. Opportunities are going to come. Just show your work the right way. You don't have to do clickbaits and start drama and, and, and disagree with everybody online just because you want that engagement. Just be you. Just be you. Look at me. Next year, GTR is turning 20 years old next year. And Congratulations. I'm proud. I'm proud. Thank you. I'm proud of the stuff that I've done, the stuff that, I, you know, with Paris and, and Pete and Mandy and, you know, uh, Dave and everybody that were involved with GTR throughout the years. We did that together, man. We did it. And we have never was always looking for trouble and like things like that. Everybody wants to talk to us. Everybody want to work with us. And they're always inviting us to for like opportunities because they know we're not that type of crowd that will start crap online. You know, think about this. All those people that you've seen online that has a lot of like videos, it has thousands and hundreds of thousands of views. Do you see them at any of these events? Any of these events? Zero. Oh. Because nobody wants to work with them. So they're depending on the, that type of grift just starts nonsense online because they know people are going to watch. But they're honestly, are, are, are they going to be on TV talking about, about the industry or like things like that? Are they going to get, let's say, let's say Tony, Tim Cook, right? Mention your name. Like, are they going to get those type of opportunities or presenting an award at the Dice Awards, right, Paris? Right? Yeah. 
you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not going to get those opportunities at all, at all. You know, so that's why I feel like this is, it is important for us to talk about this because at the end of the day, all of them are going to go away. And the people that are doing the, 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 the things the right way are going to last longer. It's like, uh, it's like, think of it like with hip hop. You have, you have the Nas and the Jay Z, the L Cool J and Will Smith, all these people that have been doing it for years, right? Run DMC, right? All those, all those cats still doing it but remember all those people that you got to see in the 90s and the early 2000s oh yeah they had they had a quick you know radio hit or maybe they had like a a, a, a catchy ringtone that they got money at the moment but where are they now that goes away that goes away because people are going to find another person that has like a better content that they're going to move on you know so yeah you're 100 right man and that goes back mm-hmm. to what i was saying before it's like you have built something that you are going to be proud of that you are proud of these mm-hmm. guys don't have that at all, man. They really no. don't. No. They don't. And, you know, it's interesting, though, that you guys bring up that you get these opportunities. It actually, I have my own, like, small story to tell of where I remember when I was working at Windows Central um, and I did the main review for Outlast Trials. And mm-hmm. I got the opportunity to get that key, I think, like, a week or so early. It was my first time, like, ever having an embargo that was that long, <laughs> you know, where I had that much prep time. And... Because of the review that I did, I got my first quote on a placard and That's they awesome. advertised it. And I was like, this is incredible. This is absolutely amazing. Like one of my coworkers, Jen, um, <laughs> Jen Box on Twitter, she posted, she tagged me and then she like messaged me on, on Twitter. And she was like, Ariel, Ariel, look at this shit. Look, 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 look. I was like, wait, what are you talking about? Slow down. And I saw it. I'm like, oh my God, it's baby's first placard. <laughs> That's amazing. And I was so in the moment beside myself. I felt like such a weave of imposter syndrome. But then I reminded myself, I was like, no, I worked for this. I worked like eight years doing YouTube. And then since 2018 is when I started journalism. I did articles on literally every little game that I played, every huge game that I played on my YouTube channel. And it came to fruition of where, wow, I work at a company and my words are literally there. And Mm -hmm. it was one of the most meaningful, powerful moments. And it let me know that my work is good enough to be seen and to be represented. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's incredible. It's incredible feeling. And this is just to show you guys, you know, for those of you who are watching and listening, that it's always better, much like the story of the, um, what was it? The turtle and the hare always do things the slow way. Slow and steady wins the race. It's never the fast route that gets you any sort of progress. Mm-hmm. And let me pass along this little bit of advice, doing trying to do it the right way. What will happen as you do things the right way? And that, that's an awesome achievement that you had and definitely something to be proud of. As you do the, if you do this long enough and you start to get accolades and you start being able to work with more companies and you're getting more access to things and let's be honest, they're sending you things early, early review codes, hardware, or like you're, you're getting all these things, you're showing them off. I'm just telling you, this, this is going to happen. To anyone watching, listening to this, you will have people that see this and they will do everything in their power to try and tear you down for that. They will yep. tell you, you don't deserve this. They will tell you, you, you sold out, you're bought and sold. Now all of a sudden your opinion's not valid. Like they will say all these crazy, ridiculous things because, you know, I'm just keeping it real. They want to be in the position that you are in. And because they're not, they will try and drag you back down to their level. Do not engage with that at all. Don't respond to it. Don't engage with it. Don't let it make you feel bad. We're all human. You're going to react to it. I get it. I react to it. <laughs> just just don't react to them. Don't yeah. just keep it moving. You know what I mean? Rely on your own, your own private support system, your friends, talk offline or whatever. Vent your frustrations that way if you need to. But the point is, you earned whatever it is that you got. Don't let someone that has not tell you any differently is the point that, that I'm trying to make here because Danny will tell you, Tony will tell you, I mean, it's damn near every day, every day. You can't have any kind of achievement. You can't be proud of anything that you've done without somebody trying to tear that down. And, and I've reached the point where it is envy. It is 
hundred percent envy at this point. I used to try and rationalize it. Well, maybe it's not this, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. No, it's envy because what I've learned is if those same people were given the opportunities that we've earned, they would take them too. Absolutely. But they also wouldn't know what to do with it because they don't have the experience. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. I mean, I mean, because my thing is like, you know, I have I've gotten a lot of crap over the years about whatever various thing I may have had an opportunity to do or I get or whatever. And I'm just realizing it's like and people like, oh, yo, you sold out. You did this. You did that. And it was like, "Mm, no, because the one like it's so funny, like with Xbox, like my relationship with Xbox and the things that I've been able to do with them. Danny will tell you. Who was the biggest critic on G- Gamer Tag Radio probably from about 2013 till about 2018 of Xbox? Me. Yeah. And the irony of that is, and this brings it full circle to what we were talking about before. If I tell you I don't like something, I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to break it down and when, when, as, as intelligent as I possibly can. Right? They noticed that. They saw that. I've had many conversations with people at Xbox that appreciated the criticism, the constructive criticism of what they were not doing correctly so they could fix it. That's the dirty secret about the gaming industry. You can tell them how much you love a game all day long. They want to hear what's wrong. Mm -hmm. They can fix it. That's the whole point. But you can do it in a respectful way at the same time. You can be critical and respectful. You know, the two can happen at the same time. And I think some people miss that where they think if you're criticizing something, you just basically got to just completely dump over it. And just it's the worst thing in the world. It's like, no, you can talk about something that you don't like. Like as an example, Starfield, a game that I quite enjoy, um, kind of similar to you had a opportunity to review it early for kind of funny. I was their lead review. It's the first time I did the lead review for kind of funny. So I took a huge responsibility in that. So when we did the review, I made sure I was as thorough as I possibly could be. And while I gave it, I think a four out of five, I pointed out what I didn't like about the game. You can improve this. You can improve that. You know, it's, you can do both at the same time. So much so. And again, this is on my own little personal, uh, uh, proud moment. Todd Howard told me they took a something I said in that review and and the development team made T-shirts on it. Oh, that's That's crazy. That's so sad. You know what I'm saying? That's That's awesome. That's little stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's like I take a sense of pride in that thing. Ain't nobody taking that away from me. Uh, you, You damn right. I'm proud about that. And I continue to be. And any of your achievements, be proud of them. Don't look. Your biggest cheerleader should be yourself Eh. every time. I've learned that lesson, too. If there's something I want to be proud of, I'm going to say it. And can't nobody tell me no different. And that's just how it should be. I agree with with Paris 100%. Because here's here's the thing. Here's the thing, Ariel. A lot of a lot of folks that follows you, they see your posts, they see the stuff that you've been doing and all this stuff. It will also be helpful in the future for them to be like hey you know what we should work with Ariel because look look at the stuff that she's been doing now throughout the years you know look at the achievements that she's done you know and she she's up and coming like that type of thing you know so I've been getting a lot of opportunities because I'm always posting my wins all the time instead of me attacking people online I'd rather post my wins because that to me is more productive it's it, it also like I sometimes I do this I'll go back and see the stuff that I post and see the, you know, what people were saying at that time. I'll listen to like old episodes of GTR of like our interviews with like, let's say with Phil, with, with uh, Peter Moore, a bunch of other people that want our show. That motivates me to do better and also helps me to, to get inspired to continue because of all the stuff that I've been doing. You know, um, I've been getting... A lot of because Re and I, Rihanna and I, for those who don't know, we started our business uh, back in February, it's a consulting business. And because of the stuff that we've done in the past and things that we post online, all that stuff, companies that I've never worked with in my life are hitting us up for opportunities to work with them. Yeah, we like I'm happy the stuff that we've been doing now the past couple months. You know, working independently, just us two. With a baby, which is hard to do, really, really hard, but we, we, we figure it out, you know what I'm saying? And 
this is just a couple months. I can imagine years from now the stuff that the stuff that we're gonna be doing. You know, so I think if you have an opportunity to post your wins, post them. Always post them, man. Cause that that that's gonna motivate you and also like motivate others to see like, man, Ariel did this, man, Tony had done that, I could do it too, you know. So Yeah. It's not showing know, off. It's really yeah. cool because it's like from I, I remember the first time like I the first time I got a really really massive win more so than Windows Central was getting my first triple A key sent to me for spoken and that was like whoa okay this is amazing senpai noticed me I'm on cloud nine right now and I remember people commenting saying like oh she's going to get this and she's going to give it a positive review because it was sent to her and I had to remind people that just because reviewers and journalists get keys sent to them in no way is it an obligation at all for them to give it, the game itself a positive review. The company, if you're giving the game a positive review, it no longer becomes a review. It becomes an advertisement. And that's not what we're doing. So, yeah, you, a, yeah. yeah you, you, you compromise your integrity when you do that. It's funny you bring <laughs> this up because I literally had this conversation with a friend yesterday where, you know, the, the whole thing of like, Oh, this company um, flew you out there. Maybe you should be a little softer. No, you shouldn't. You should be fair. You should be f- always be fair to them. But just because, because the instant you decide to go, I need to give this company good press so I can get access. You're done. No one's gonna take you seriously anymore. You know. Um, and something I, I want to jump on what that you guys said. Because there's another conversation I was having. This, this was about to the Elden Ring DLC, believe it or not, but it's related to this. Because a lot of people are complaining, even people who've beaten the game, saying it's very difficult. Um, what? You, 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 yeah, yeah. But, but anyway, but my thing is like, but it, it's related to this, though. Even if you get really big and, and everybody knows when you're great, you got to also be humble, right? Don't think that you're so hot that you're better than everybody and that other people are beneath you. You shouldn't think like that. You should always think not only of where you came from, but what you still want to do. You are never going to be that guy. And the instant you do think that, you're done because now you're not going to improve yourself anymore. Always remain humble. You know, and I'm not saying be self-deprecating or that, or don't celebrate what you've done. You you should do that. But always remain humble and, you know, be and be grateful for what you have I, I noticed that too you see a lot of people that have gotten really big and they don't show any appreciation for how they got there or any of that or the people around them it's like you you gotta you gotta remain you gotta remember all that stuff man. it's, it's important you you're not that hot you could be brought down <laughs> by any at any moment so you know you want to make sure you like you guys like Danny, like you said build up a good legacy you know paris like you said treat everybody with respect and you're gonna be all right but never think you're the hot shit is you know you may not be hell forever you know yeah yeah i actually this perfectly goes into the next topic that i want to discuss with you guys is what was the moment that you knew and this is actually going to be really cool for those who are watching and listening to this who want to get into podcasting or content creation what was the moment that you realized that your words had impact that oh shit i i'm saying something and it means something to someone else and I'm going to start this one because this is something I actually spoke about with my uh, with my dad before because we were talking about journalism and he was asking me what was the biggest thing that you've learned so far in your journalism space and like in the career. And I thought that was such a cool question when back in 2019, I reviewed Fallout 3 and I criticized it and I said that this game has a lot of racism in it. It has a lot that it needs to improve on. The bugs are absolutely awful. I showed footage where I was playing the game and it got stuck multiple times. Um, And there were parts that I loved about it. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the music. Probably the music is my favorite part of it. Getting to see like different aspects of the story grow and mature. I loved that. But yeah, the main thing that I said when I called a lot of the aspects in it racist, I got so much heat for that. And he said, that's a good sign. It means that you touched on something and people are thinking about it. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay, that's actually really interesting. So I want to dive into that topic with you guys. Oof, I have one. And Paris remember this one. Um, this is a couple months after I, I launched GTR. where, And I'm going to try to keep it short. But uh, I interviewed a group of people that went to an event for Xbox and, and MTV. 
that they reveal the the next console, the Xbox 360, oh, right? Wow. So you know, I found out about this. I'm like, oh, let me let me into them. So I invite them on the show the next day because it was recorded and they were going to show it a, a week later. So I had them on. They were at the event Thursday night, Friday afternoon. We did a recording. So and they talked about everything about the show, the the games, everything, right? About the console before they show uh, Xbox and MTV aired it on TV. So I posted this. And it was like an hour, maybe like 40 minutes to an hour, the, the content. Terrible quality. We recorded through the Halo 2 lobby on Xbox Live, right? So so I, I posted the audio, and it was there maybe for like an hour up online, and it was all over the message boards. This is before social media, so it was everywhere. I got an email from Xbox. Hey, Danny, can you take that down? Because, you know, we're, we're planning to announce this next year. I mean, next, next week. So I'm like, yeah, sure. So I took it off. I was nervous. It's like my first time seeing this type of thing, right? So it was already too late. Now I see GameSpot, IGN, all the major, GamePro, all the major outlets was talking about that 40-minute terrible quality audio. <laughs> <laughs> everything about Xbox and Perfect Dark Zero, everything, right? And that's when I realized, I realized, yo, I have to be careful what I put online because it will get picked up and everybody's going to talk about it. It will get featured. It also will mess up my relationship with companies if I really want to get into this because it's like you have to be responsible for what you post. That's what I'm trying to say. I didn't know. That was like my first experience. And it was the reason why that happened was because of miscommunication from MTV and Xbox. Xbox told everybody, don't say anything. MTV, no, tell everybody, tell your friends. So that's what happened. They they told me, I recorded, and that's what everything went down, you know? But guess what? I went to E3 later that, 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 year, that year, and, you know, there was people that worked on certain games that was, got leaked on that episode. People were not happy. They were like, bro, like, you know, and I had to explain to them, like, my, my situation, you know? But overall i think people should be really careful on like things like that like that's why i don't go out there and leak stuff because sometimes we get we get stuff all the time like hints and like you know but we we keep it as a surprise we don't we don't go out there and ruin all the hard work that everybody's been doing behind the scenes on like that press conference that was a team that was a that was everybody involved that did that for xbox you know so Imagine it's like a domino effect. You messed up one, it will affect the whole presentation, you know? So that's why we got to be really careful on that. That's when I realized, yo, I got to be like super careful with that, what I post online, you know? Because I was, I, honestly, I didn't know that was going to happen at all, man. You know, and that's how Paris discovered GTR. He saw it at, at, a, at a forum. Oh. Yeah. Back that's in old amazing. Yeah. That's interesting. Oh, gosh. I would have been like walking on eggshells, be like, I don't want to say anything <laughs> compromising. Imagine this. February, you start your show, and then March, April, that's when it happens. Like, months after that. My God. That was, like, <laughs> too quick. Too quick. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Paris, Tony? So, for me, um, probably January of 2010, I had the opportunity to interview Casey Hudson who was the creative director at Bioware for Mass Effect 2. And you have to understand, this was a game I was highly anticipating. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm doing all the research on it. I'm trying to get any nugget of information I could find out about this game. I was finding out. And a PR person who is still a dear friend to this day, <laughs> don't ask me how, don't ask me why, she gave my peon ass uh, an opportunity to interview Casey Hudson. And I'll never forget, I had to do this. I was at work. I literally got in my car on my laptop on a hot spot using Skype. And I interviewed Casey Hudson. It was one of the most prepared interviews I had ever done at that point. And I don't even remember how long we talked at this point. It was probably 30, 45 minutes or something like that, right? But anyways, I knew my stuff. 
and I'm asking various questions about the game and we're going back and forth to whatever. That got picked up on the Bioware forums. And I'll never forget, it was such a proud moment for me. People said that was the most informative discussion Casey had had about Mass Effect 2 leading up to launch. Just a little old random me. I don't know what I'm doing. That's <laughs> got, incredible. Got that opportunity. And uh, that's when I knew, hey, I could, I could be good at this. My voice matters. You know, what, what I'm doing matters. That was probably for me the moment that, that stands out the most. That's amazing. Oh, that's so cool. I love hearing stories like that. Yeah. So I'm going to give two quick ones, but and they're slightly different than what was said, but it's still uh, related. Because um, I have a really bad habit of not remembering the things I've written. <laughs> you know, I was like, <laughs> people come up to me, Tony, I love that review. I'm like, and I thank them all. Um, you know, thank you for that. I'm like, I don't remember writing that. Um, but I remember, <laughs> but this is but this is important though. 2014, I went to PAX East the first time. It was like probably the first big trade show I had done. Um, no, it wasn't. It was the second one. I, I went to E3 a year before that. So I'm at PAX East, had a great time. Got very, very drunk the night before a panel. Um, <laughs> it was a blast. And the panel in, in question, it was me, Diana, Laura, and a couple other people. We got into a big fight about Mass Effect 3's ending. It was great. Glorious. Um, but after that PAX East, something happened that I didn't consider. Because up to that point... I just saw myself as Tony Polanco, video game writer, nothing else. That's it. After that show, I had people DMing me on Twitter. They were like, yo, it was so great meeting another Latino writer. I never thought of myself that. I'm like, oh, shit. That's a good point. Because, and I thought about my whole, if I see a byline, like Adam Sessler, that's cool. Brian Crescente, oh, whoa, he's like me, you know? So after that point, I always keep in mind, it's like, there's another uh, Hispanic kid out there looking at my stuff going, yo, I could be me too. And I've had people in subsequent years, I've been doing this a while, like, Tony, I've read your stuff. I saw your videos and, you know, we came from the same culture and that inspired me to do this. I'm like, so it's always going to keep that in mind, you know? Um, and, and so I learned that really early. Um, and then, and last example, this one happened recently. And this is about don't, think your any of your work is lesser than something big right about a year ago or more than a year ago, i reviewed some random lenovo tablet i didn't care for i i didn't think it was great this was in the ipad pro this wasn't you know anything big it was in the samsung tab which is a little whatever tablet right i got an email from a reader thanking me for writing that thorough review because it helped him find the right tablet for him. He goes, yeah, it's not the greatest, but for my needs, it's perfect. And you were the only person that gave this a fair shake. Like that goes to show you your words mean something, you know, and you should always be fair. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's incredible. I love these examples. And see, this is also another uh, teachable educational moment for people who are watching and listening, that if you are a public figure or if you are literally just someone who is on Twitter for the drama or whatever it is, or just a viewer for passer on by, if you say something, be aware of what you're saying. Because every time you speak, the words that you say hold weight, they hold merit. I don't care if you think that they don't. Anyone who is watching and listening to this, that goes for everyone here on this podcast, your words matter because you were, and I'm, I'm not a religious person at all, but I believe that we are here for a reason. So if we are here for a reason, we should always be conscientious of the words that we speak. So yeah, I think that that's, that's really, I love the story so much. Um, next topic I want to go into is an upcoming game called Silent Hill, which I mean, it gets, I love that these games get remade, unlike the ones that Paris likes. Sorry. <laughs> Why are you wow. giving a man grief? What, what, what is wow. this? What is this That's about? Crazy. <laughs> Harris, what did you do? <laughs> See, people know. Super people know. Nintendo Switch. <laughs> You'll say I'm right. It was perfect timing. <laughs> it's not going to be Super Nintendo Switch. Hey! Hey! Yeah, and you, this was going to happen when, when oh Nintendo, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> what's today? Today, June 24th, 6.37 p.m. Pacific time. Yes. When Nintendo announces this new console, and it's not called Super Nintendo <laughs> Switch, I'm going to call Paris straight up, and I'll be like, I told you so. <laughs> I told you so. And I'm going to end it like that. 
Oh man. We we still love you, Paris. <laughs> Silent Hill sucks. How about that? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And listen, listen, listen. At least they're going harder as you know, as hard as Capcom right now with their releases. Okay, just keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Resident Evil, next one's coming out. Yeah, it'll be okay. a remaster of a remake. You know, a remaster. Oh, wow. I can't even disagree with you there because the first one doesn't even need to be remade. Everyone's crying <laughs> in a corner like, I want the first one to be remade. No, you don't. It's nostalgia. Sit back down. Okay, let's just <laughs> stop it right there. <laughs> But I wanted to talk yeah. about Silence Hill because a lot of people are talking about the remake. A lot of people are upset about what's going on. I want to get your guys' input because I find it so fascinating that the most popular games that are coming out right now are remakes. It's not like it's so weird to see because our nostalgia has such a finite input on the way that we view gaming. South of Midnight by far, I'm going to bring that one up again, is by far one of the most original IPs I've seen this year besides lies of p and i think that it's so crucial to understand that to just admit our nostalgia plays a really finite point but i want to get your guys's input what do you guys think are you guys going to be playing silent hill 2 what are your thoughts i i'm just gonna just say it i've never played these games so i'm not interested uh, in this so i don't really have anything constructive to add here yeah um for me i watched the trailer I was gonna be excited. I mean, it's it's uh it's one of the my favorite developers that worked uh, worked on the remake. It's uh what's the name the Uber Uber uh, right? Yeah, they worked on Uber. they worked on mm-hmm. Layers of Fear and all that stuff. So I just want to see it, just to see it, you know, because I know they released uh, a game on Xbox uh, a couple years back that has that type of like Resident Evil and Silent Hill vibe. So I just want to see how it is, but it's not something that where I just want to like complete it and finish it. Like um, I think I'm done with with like remakes like that uh i want to play something new honestly so but hey i'm not mad if people want to pl- play that it's all good there's no- nothing wrong with it you know? yeah there's i mean I'll, I'll, for me. yeah i'll just simply I agree but i'll just simply say this is just again byproduct of where the industry currently is budgets are out of control less risk are being taken this is a safer bet to remake something than it is to make a brand new IP. We've seen some of the brand new IPs that have come out the past couple of years. They've not sold well and those studios simply go away. So yeah. this is why you're going to It's not going to stop here. You're going to see even more of them. I think in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yep. Man. Yeah. So I know that you do have to go really quickly, but the last thing that I want to touch on before we leave for tonight, I just want to say before we go, thank you guys for joining me for this podcast. Oh, it's always so fun having fun. you guys here. Thank you for having us. So thank last you. thing I want to go into, um, because this is actually one that I saw Paris talking about on Twitter, is X-Men. Now, I'm not a fan particularly, but I've never seen the anime or the, not the anime, the cartoon. I have no idea what to call it currently. I <laughs> See, look what you did. You called, you called the X-Men an anime. You just upset Paris. He's done. I don't know what to call it. I don't know what to call it. Excuse me. Listen, I'll say this for people who are watching and listening. Excuse my not un- unknowing naivety on this topic matter. But for those of you who are not, like, for people who are not aware of the TV show or noobs like myself, why is this such an important show currently? I think Tony should answer this one. <laughs> it's funny because I, never, I, I actually purposely skipped X-Men 97. Uh, I, yeah. I did. <laughs> oh no! You are, yeah, you are, I, I, I gotta jump in. I gotta jump in. So <laughs> yeah, X Men so, ninety seven yeah. is probably, and I know you're very critical of, of what Marvel's been doing, Tony. It's probably the best thing they've done since Endgame, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. It captured what makes the X Men great. It's not just about oh, we're superhero mutants with powers and all of that it gets into the relationships between the characters and why they're so important. Fantastic job. I did not think some of the places they went in 97, I did not think they were going to go. I mean, I'm literally jaw on the ground shocked. Some of the stuff they did. I won't even spoil it. Cause I don't know what you know, but man, there's some episodes in there. I was like, it ends, And I'm like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> <There> was, <laughs> I can't wait for the next episode. Crazy stuff. And yeah. I will simply say this. There are a couple of iconic moments from the comics in the 90s that are in the show. I'll leave it at that. That's, mm-hmm. that's all I'll say. 
Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, I've I honestly like the last comic book related thing I've watched was for Thor. And I got to see Loki and all that stuff. And I'm not a comic book person per se, but seeing a lot of what the comics were brought to life in movies, it was absolutely amazing, especially Batman. I mean, I will say Batman, Blade, and the Joker are my top three currently. Mm -hmm. So that's why seeing Blade brought to life in a video game and for the next movie is going to be incredible. Yeah, I, I oh. love I love X Men ninety seven. It's funny because yeah. I'm gonna hit up Paris every every week. Uh, every time there's like a new episode, like bro, what the heck they're taking this man? Like, the story is freaking wild. It's so so well put. There together. is something that happens Ooh. that I'm like, wait, the, no, they're not going where I th- literally. I'm like, out of my, I I couldn't believe it. I was <laughs> I was shook, yeah. shook. <laughs> So good, yep. Tony. You gotta watch. You gotta watch Tony. You yeah, gotta watch. You gotta watch it. It. I'm so telling you, you're gonna you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. It's yeah, because you gotta understand where really I'm coming really from. Good. I've I've been burned by Marvel so many times. I'm like, I think I'm, and I'm saying this as a okay, back. I one of the first comics I ever got into in my life. This 1990, right? X Men, right? Jim Lee, right? All that oh, era. Wow. I watched the animated series. Got all the X Men video games. Love me some X Men, but I don't trust Marvel anymore. <laughs> so that's where I'm coming at it from. Um, yeah, I've been burned. Yeah, 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 I, I, I've been burned yeah, too many times. Way. Yeah, yeah. The and, showrunner yeah. understands the X Men. One hundred understands the X Men. He understands 100%. the X Men. It so much so that look, whatever is ever. But when they like, it's like they're sitting on a gold mine for live action. Don't mess this up. We'll that's see. how good the x-men yeah. i know i know I, i'm with you on that we'll obviously see with deadpool and wolverine what, how they handle that but i mean they're sitting on a gold mine for live action mm-hmm. if they do it right man and, and uh and so i will good. say this uh, ariel like i know you haven't watched the x-men series they they do have the original series from the 90s available on disney plus so you can start watching Ooh. like the old ones before start nice. watching the the new the new 97 ones yep yeah, I'll, I'll need to do that because, I mean, I am a fan of Wolverine. I am a fan of X-Men from what I saw of the movies. I don't know how good of a representation that is, but yeah, it is something I'm going to check out. So, but one mm-hmm. show I would highly recommend people to check out as for my pick has been Hotel. It's a cartoon for adults, basically, of where they go. It's very raunchy. It's very like you're cursing. They're, it's very well done, but think of an adult version of Disney musicals. Hmm. That's all I'm going to say. It's very okay. well done. I mean, Disney, he's right now rolling in his grave. What who he missed out. Yeah. Oh my God. But it's really interesting. Um, and last thing before we go, I just want to say thank you guys so much for joining. I know you guys have to get going right now, but if you guys want to check out their stuff, all their links will be down in the description below. So you guys can check them out. And as usual, if you all like our faces and what we do, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell down below. May you find your worth in the waking world, your hunter. Stay casually nerdy. Now we'll see you all in the next video, podcast, and review. Umbasa.